Archaeopteryx, or the famous dino bird, was a small dinosaur that looked a lot like a bird. It lived in Europe 150 million years ago, during the late Jurassic period. When people found the first Archaeopteryx fossil in Germany in 1861, they were really confused. Birds weren't supposed to exist that far back in time. Some even thought the fossil might be an angel. Since then, scientists have found more Archaeopteryx fossils. Many of them have long feathers, but we're not sure if Archaeopteryx could fly like modern birds, or if it was more like a glider, like that green goblin guy from Spider-Man. Now, Archaeopteryx is also known as Urvogel in German, which means primeval bird. But does that mean it was the first ever bird? Stay tuned to find out. In terms of size, it was similar to a raven, featuring broad wings with rounded tips and a relatively long tail in proportion to its body length. It measured up to 0.5 meters, 1 foot 8 inches in body length, and had a wingspan of around 0.7 meters, 2 feet 4 inches. Its estimated weight ranged from 0.5 to 1 kilogram, 1.1 to 2.2 pounds. Their physical traits resembled those of small-sized Mesozoic dinosaurs more than modern birds. They had features such as a bony tail, elongated second toes that could stretch far, long wings with rounded tips, three fingers with claws, and jaws equipped with sharp teeth. Their skeletal characteristics were similar to Dromaeosaurids and Trodontids. Now, Archaeopteryx is famous for its impressive flight feathers, which resemble those found in modern birds. These flight feathers have a specific arrangement of barb, barbule, and barbasil, which helps them stay sturdy during flight, just like in modern birds. Even the tail feathers, while slightly less asymmetrical, have strong veins similar to those seen in today's birds. While we know a lot about Archaeopteryx's flight feathers, we don't have as much information about its body feathers. Most of the detailed research has been done on the well-preserved Berlin specimen. However, it's important to remember that different species of Archaeopteryx might have variations in their feather structures. In the Berlin specimen, we see well-developed feathers on the legs that look similar to contour feathers, which are essential for supporting flight. Additionally, there are patches of pinaceous feathers along the back, resembling the plumage of modern birds, although not as stiff as the flight feathers. Other parts of the bird show a proto-down structure, similar to the fluffy appearance of the dinosaur Cynosauropteryx, suggesting a fur-like texture. There's no sign of feathers on the upper neck and head of Archaeopteryx specimens, but this absence might be because of how the fossils were preserved. Most of them were found in sediment at the bottom of the sea, after floating around for some time. During this drifting, the muscles and tendons relaxed, giving the specimens a typical death pose. This relaxation could have caused the skin to soften, leading to the feathers falling off before they were buried. So, it's likely that the feathers on the head and upper neck got lost during this process, while the tail feathers stayed attached. The structure of their feathers was very similar to feathers of modern birds. This suggests that the feathers were good for flying. But when it comes to the bones related to flying, Archaeopteryx wasn't fully developed. Hence, it might not have been able to fly long distances, even though it had the right feathers for it. In 2011, Ryan Carney, a grad student, and his team did a study on the colors of an Archaeopteryx feather. They used a number of fancy machines to look at the tiny structures in the feather and compared them to the feathers from 87 modern birds. They figured out that the feather was most likely black, especially towards the end. This feather was probably one that covered the main feathers on the wings. This doesn't mean that Archaeopteryx was all black, but it suggests it had some black feathers, especially on its wings. Connie said this makes sense for flying because black feathers are strong. Another study in 2013 suggested Archaeopteryx might have had both light and dark feathers, with the ends being darker. They looked at chemicals in the fossil to figure this out. However, some scientists disagreed with this and said the evidence wasn't clear. In 2020, Connie and others showed that the feather they studied was completely matte black, not shiny or mixed with other colors. But they still don't know for sure what the rest of Archaeopteryx looked like. But what we do know is that it evolved from small meat-eating dinosaurs. Now, some scientists have pointed out that other bird-like dinosaurs of similar age, or even older than Archaeopteryx, had features very similar to it. These features include things like feathers, hands with three fingers, a wishbone, and long, strong arms. However, these traits, which are often considered unique to birds, are also found in figures like Ekgenji and Oronus Jui, 
which are thought to have lived about 5 million and 10 million years before Archaeopteryx. Because of this, scientists argue that Archaeopteryx might not actually be the earliest bird in the world. Instead, they suggest that many of the features used to describe birds could apply to a broader group of dinosaurs called paraves. This group includes birds and dinonychosaurs, which are a type of theropod dinosaur that includes trudontids and dromaeosaurs. Archaeopteryx lived in what is now Bavaria, Germany. Back then, during the late Jurassic period, Europe was closer to the equator and had a warm and dry climate compared to today. These creatures inhabited areas where there weren't many big trees suitable for gliding. The structure of their claws indicates that they likely didn't climb trees often. Instead, their ability to fly might have been related to their behavior for hunting or escaping from predators. Along with Archaeopteryx, other small creatures like insects, lizards, and even some flying reptiles called pterosaurs, as well as the small dinosaur Compsognathus, also live there. While not much is known about its diet, we do know that Archaeopteryx was a carnivore, meaning it ate meat, and based on the size of its head, mouth, and teeth, it probably preyed on small animals. This likely included large insects and possibly small lizards and mammals. It probably caught its prey using only its jaws and may have used its claws to help subdue larger prey. A study in 2009 looked at how fast Archaeopteryx grew compared to other birds and dinosaurs. They found that Archaeopteryx probably grew slowly because its bones didn't have many blood vessels on the outside, which is usually a sign of slow growth in animals. Since they couldn't directly analyze Archaeopteryx bones to see growth rings, they used bone porosity, how holy the bones are, to guess its growth rate. They guessed it might have grown as slowly as a duck or as fast as an ostrich. Based on this, they estimated it would take around 970 days for an Archaeopteryx to reach adult size, which is about 2 to 2.2 pounds. Other ancient birds like J. Halornis and Sapiornis as well as a dinosaur called Mahakala also grew slowly. But birds like Confuciusornis and Ichthyornis grew faster, similar to modern birds. They also compared Archaeopteryx to kiwi birds, which also grow slowly, suggesting they might have similar metabolism. A recent study by scientists from the American Museum of Natural History and the University of Texas looked into the brain of Archaeopteryx. Birds today have really big brains compared to their bodies, Scientists call this hyperinflation, but reptiles, on the other hand, don't have such big brains. When scientists traced back the family tree of birds to dinosaurs like the theropods, they wanted to know why bird brains were so big. Archaeopteryx's brain was somewhere in between the brains of distant theropod relatives like Tyrannosaurus rex and modern birds. It had parts that looked more like those of birds, especially in areas for seeing and hearing, which might have helped it fly. But as more fossils of feathered dinosaurs were found, the American Museum team wanted to take a closer look at brain sizes. Their study showed that Archaeopteryx wasn't as special as they thought. Other feathered dinosaurs like Xanabazar and Conchoraptor actually had bigger brains for their body size. They also found that only one part of Archaeopteryx's brain, the part for smelling, looked like a bird's brain. But some other dinosaurs had noses just as big. These new discoveries make us wonder about how dinosaur brains evolved. Maybe Archaeopteryx's family already had brains more like modern birds, or maybe different dinosaur groups grew bigger brains separately. If having a bird-like brain was important for flying, then these other dinosaurs might have been good flyers too. This study shows why we need more scientists to keep studying fossils and birds. We want to understand how flying affects brain development and if other feathered dinosaurs could fly too. Coming to its discovery, Archaeopteryx is one of the most famous fossils in the world. The first of these amazing creatures was discovered in 1860 or 1861, when a single feather was found in limestone near Solhofen, Germany. But there's a bit of a mystery here, because this feather might have actually belonged to another early bird species that hasn't been found yet. In 1861, the first Archaeopteryx skeleton, missing much of its head and neck, was found near Lungenaltheim, Germany. It was given to a doctor as payment and later sold to the London Natural History Museum. The most complete skeleton, known as the Berlin specimen, was discovered in 1874 or 1875 near Eichstadt, Germany, by a farmer named Jacob Niemeyer. It eventually ended up in the Humboldt Museum for Naturkinder. Other specimens include the Maxburg specimen, Eichstadt specimen, 
and Harlem specimen, originally thought to be a pterodactylus species. The 12th and last Archaeopteryx specimen was found in 2010 and announced in 2014, but it hasn't been fully described by scientists yet. Now, Archaeopteryx holds significant importance in the history of science for several reasons. Firstly, its discovery came at a pivotal time, just two years after Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species, which introduced the theory of evolution. At the time, many people, including scientists, were skeptical of Darwin's ideas about animals evolving over time. The fossils of Archaeopteryx provided tangible evidence supporting the concept of evolution. They clearly showed a creature with features of both dinosaurs and birds, suggesting a transitional form between the two groups. This finding helped to strengthen the case for evolution and challenge the prevailing beliefs about the static nature of species. Despite initial skepticism, the authenticity of the Archaeopteryx fossils was eventually confirmed by scientists. This resolved any doubts about the legitimacy of the discovery and further solidified its importance in the scientific community. To wrap things up, Archaeopteryx was a strange mix between dinosaurs and birds. Its fossils offer a window into a pivotal moment in evolutionary history when dinosaurs evolved into birds. Overall, it marked a landmark moment in the study of dinosaurs and evolution. It remains one of the most significant finds in the history of paleontology, highlighting the interconnectedness of life on Earth and providing valuable insights into the evolutionary history of birds. As we keep learning more, Archaeopteryx reminds us how everything in nature is connected and how there's always more to discover. And that's all for this video. Do you think Archaeopteryx was more a bird or dinosaur? Drop your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.